So I recently attended a virtual conference for all of ecology two weeks ago and I learned so much in this conference. It was actually all online. So I was really surprised at how useful it was. It turned out to be a really incredible experience and I gained a lot of very useful information during that week. And I wanted to bring some of that information to other people that didn't have access to it or weren't aware that of this opportunity. So one of the really big things that I learned during this conference was different opportunities and jobs within ecology, but I'm very interested in marine biology. So I'm going to take a spin on uh, all of the information I learned and talk about the job opportunities in marine biology. And the very first one, this is going to be like a little series. I think I'm going to create um, a few similar videos, but today I'm going to be talking about nonprofits. Nonprofits are definitely one of my favorite types of careers within um, biology, environmental science, and that's why I'm talking about the first because I really like them. And I've had a, a little bit of experience in different nonprofits, so I have a bit more insight on this type of career also. So, what is a nonprofit? A nonprofit is basically an organization that is not for profit. So, they're generally supporting different types of social and environmental causes, they're very philanthro philanthropic. Um, so they're going to be getting all of their money and income from donations, from fundraising, from different grants and um, different awards from the federal government, from the state government. So some examples of marine related NGOs that you may or may not have heard of. Uh, one really big one is Oceana. This is like the biggest international NGO related to the ocean, obviously, and they are going to be raising a lot of awareness for really huge international different types of marine related issues like plastic pollution or coral bleaching, climate change, those sorts of things. And they're going to be engaging the public to interact with those different types of issues in different ways. So they might be asking for donations to support the organization. They might be putting out different types of petitions to give to different organizations in different um, parts of the government. Um, they do a lot of different things, but they are basically supporting these very large environmental causes. So on a much smaller scale and functioning very differently are some more localized NGOs and nonprofits like um, some I have personally had experience with. So one that I've worked with in um, on a small island called Utila near Honduras is called the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center. So this organization is actually doing research with whale sharks and they are doing research on the coral reefs around the island and then they are going to the community and actually going and giving little talks to different schools and putting on events that raise awareness for these specific um, issues that are pertaining to this island in particular. So that's kind of like the big scale versus the very small scale. So who is this job for? This job is basically for people that love and have so much passion for different environmental causes, the activists. And the people that don't necessarily stick with typical career paths, nonprofits and NGOs are kind of a very unique profession because they can just be so different and dynamic. My experience with the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center in Utila was, it just opened me up to the possibility of all of these different careers within this one field. So you could be doing some very different things with an NGO, you could be doing a more science-based position and be an actual marine scientist. You could also be working a lot more with the volunteers and the interns for the organization and kind of educating them on the issues that your organization supports. You could also be specialized in outreach where you are doing a lot of public engagement. You could be working with social media and graphic design, marketing, or you could be doing a lot more of the groundwork of actually going to different communities, different um, classrooms and giving little talks or giving big talks to different people that you might want to engage with your specific issues. So going back to who this job is actually for, what I've been told from professionals in the nonprofit um, field is that this job is really great for the jack of all trades, someone that enjoy science, they enjoy activism, they enjoy communicating with the public, they enjoy transforming these big environmental issues that no one cares about into something that someone does. 
And there's obviously a lot of different approaches for how you can motivate the public and raise awareness for these issues. So it's really helpful to have a very diverse background. So another really big question I had when I was attending these panels with different professionals from different nonprofits in um, ecology was what kind of education should you have going into this type of job? So the big question I think in if anyone's pursuing graduate school is do you get an MS, a master's, or do you go all the way to a PhD? This is like something that comes up over and over and over again. So I'd love to hear more on what's the best idea. So from what they told me, I wrote down some of my notes from this conversation was smaller NGOs like the one I worked with on the small island of Utila don't really have much room and space for people with PhDs because they don't necessarily need someone with such specialization and they also don't really have the means to support someone with that kind of salary. Um, there's When you get a PhD, there's always an expectation of some certain salary that you should pay them. So for the smaller NGOs, there is a certain fear of being overqualified for a specific position. But with the larger NGOs, having a PhD can actually be a really great advantage for getting you into a position that you want. NGOs can be huge, like very, very massive, and there is definitely a lot of room in the larger NGOs like Oceana or um, the Nature Conservancy, different really big nonprofits like that. There's definitely room and definitely room for the salary for a PhD. And it can also be a really great asset to have really specific specialization in some type of, um, some form of marine biology or whatever your specialization is once you get to that point. Another interesting question that came up when I was attending these panels with um, different professionals and nonprofits was, is it a bad idea to go back and forth between academia and nonprofits? And I thought this was really an interesting question because I never really thought of that, but um, it turns out that can get a little complicated if for some reason you wanted to go from academia to nonprofits and try to go back to academia. It's definitely looked down upon if you aren't producing publications and research on during some sort of gap in your um, professional career if you're an academic. So that's definitely something to consider that these um, professionals made me realize. Another really huge thing that um, was talked about was job security. So this was a specific question I asked the panelists of what are your thoughts on job security? Because this is a big thing that personally keeps me from fully pursuing a nonprofit because there's, I mean, all of the, the money comes from the public. All of the money comes from fundraising and different grants and it doesn't seem as stable of an income. These were all the questions that I had of, isn't there any concern of losing your job if you don't get as many donations some years? or if you don't get a grant that was really important for supporting people's jobs, aren't those things that you think about? And so they gave some really, really useful advice and guidance um, when they answered this question. I think all of them did, there was like six of them. But um, basically the first person that spoke told me he has absolutely no fear of losing his job security because there are specific parts of the nonprofit that are dedicated. Their specific job is get dedicated to finding funding for the organization as a whole. So you're not necessarily concerned with finding the money yourself because there is parts of the organization that are actually dedicated to that. So his organization was kind of like a mid-sized nonprofit, so that's also something to consider. The smaller nonprofits are going to have um, different concerns, but so is a smaller business. Um, and so that was his story. And speaking from the uh, some of the larger nonprofits, they had kind of a similar thing to say that there are specific parts of the nonprofit dedicated to getting funding. So. Job security is not as big of a concern as it might seem. It seems like a big thing for me. And I thought it was really interesting kind of like reflecting on this afterwards of 
a nonprofit isn't so different from a for-profit organization in the fact that business can always fluctuate because people's interests in different, um, like money is just going to sometimes be great and sometimes not be great. It just depends on how good your, your um, organization is at um, motivating the public to raise money for your specific um, organization. If you're in a for-profit organization, maybe some people don't like your product some years. So it's the money is still going to be coming in. But it is important to consider that the smaller NGOs are definitely going to have a lot more fluctuation with their, um, their income because they aren't as established and so there isn't going to be as much of a um, source of stability if things go awry or if um, certain parts of the organization need more money. It's just, I mean, like a small business, a small business is also going to have a lot of fluctuation. A small NGO is the same story. Okay, so now I wanted to touch on salaries. And of course, this is kind of a difficult thing to address when nonprofits is basically a whole sector of jobs and like for-profit businesses, there's obviously going to be a lot of fluctuation. But I do want to acknowledge that they are not as low as you might think. I feel like there's this um, predetermined thought that nonprofit organizations are going to have lower salaries than for-profit organizations. And that might be true to some extent, but they really aren't as low as you might think. These nonprofit organizations in terms of finances actually function very similarly to for-profit organizations and because of that they're able to support pretty decent salaries and i'm not going to give any clear numbers because there's just so much fluctuation based on which specific position you have within a non-profit and there's obviously going to be a lot of variation based on your level of experience and level of education, but just know that they are pretty comparable salaries to for-profit organizations. So um, definitely do your own personal research on um, specific organizations that you are personally interested in looking at because that's going to give you a much more accurate grasp of what salaries are going to look like specifically. All right, so I think that was a lot of information for this one video. I didn't think it was gonna turn out this long, but I do hope you found it useful. This conference, the Ecological Society of America, this conference turned out to be so useful for me and I really want to bring some of that really useful information to other people because I feel like there's a lot of people that don't have access to these things or don't even know that they exist and I want to make sure that these really valuable things are known to other people. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're interested in seeing more marine biology career related things because I love to make videos like that and I will probably make a little series of videos kind of like this, touching on all the different careers that I learned about through this conference and that I have personal experience with. So anyway, I hope you have a great, I already said that, but <laughs> see ya.